So a sculptor finds a decently sized rock and takes the rock back to his place, begins to chip away at it and uh, start to carve a beautifully sculpted statue. Once he's finished, he takes it to the master, and the master says, No, the statue's actually been there all along. You just chipped away the rough edges. Of course, that's a metaphor used in the third installment of Rambo, obviously referring to Rambo, who's always been a killing machine. It was just Sam Trotman, again, I forget it, I get stumped on his name, who chipped away the rough edges and uh, showed Rambo exactly who he is. Um, for some reason, I have been having uh, glare issues where the screen is going like bright and then dark, which has never happened until I started reviewing this Rambo series, so I don't know if it's the light in the background. Um, but excuse that, I really hope that changes in uh, future reviews. Um, been trying to uh, pick away at it, but it's never happened before, like I said. Anyways, back to Rambo 3. Um, I was saying last review that I found this uh, to be my least favorite, and that is up to question um, when I rewatch the fourth and the fifth installments. Um, but I liked this the best since I've ever seen it. Uh, this was my best viewing experience of this. I don't know what I missed before. I guess the pacing is very different in this one uh, compared to the last two. Uh, obviously, compared to the first one, the first one is still the best. I don't think any anything is going to top that one. The first is a masterpiece. Um, but uh, yeah, the story is pretty kick-ass on this one. Uh, we get a little bit of a different twist. Uh, it starts off pretty basic where Rambo is in uh, Vietnam or Thailand. Uh, Thailand. Um, I forget exactly which, but uh, he's basically chilling out, trying to take it easy, trying to hide from, you know, the United States and his uh, military past, and he doesn't want anything to do with that shit anymore because he claims that his war is over. And um, again, Sam Trotman uh, comes in and offers uh, Rambo another mission. Um, says that he's going to infiltrate a uh, Russian kind of militia base that is in Afghanistan and is murdering millions of people and uh, he is going to join the Afghani troops in trying to take this uh, this militia down. Uh, Rambo refuses, doesn't want any part of it and uh, basically says no thank you and see you later and uh, Sam ends up uh, doing it himself and going in with his troops and ends up being captured so this turns from a straight up war film to a rescue mission where Rambo is like okay the last two films we also got to know Sam Trotman very well in the last two films and he's a very likable character which is nice and uh, definitely gives this film some depth because we're actually uh, rooting for the safety of a character that we actually really care about and have grown to care about a lot uh, so I like that aspect. Uh, so Rambo, yeah, he he goes in, he um, gathers a bunch of uh, Afghani troops, and he, uh, you know, sneaks into this base as dangerous as it is, and even though everybody's telling him not to do it, he, uh, he you know, wants to obviously rescue his father figure and uh, war hero, basically the guy who created him. The, his uh, his savior basically his uh, his own personal Jesus Christ you could say <laughs> um, but yeah it's it's really interesting it's it's definitely action packed even more action packed than the second one this one has the most brutality um, lots of desert fights the the whole atmosphere is like in the desert where the last one was very much in the jungle. Um, the desert setting is pretty cool. There's a lot of Gatling guns. There's even more Apache helicopters in this one. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of helicopter chases, a uh, bunch of uh, gunfights. It's absolutely ridiculous. More of the uh, uh, explosive arrows, which becomes a trope <laughs> with Rambo, I find. Um, I think that's his, uh, his soon-to-be weapon of choice, especially as the films go on. Um, there's uh, there's a scene where he's healing himself. We uh, we learn, I believe, in yeah the first film that he uh, was basically trained to hide pain or ignore pain, ignore uh, ignore pain uh, at all costs. And there's a scene where he's healing himself in this one, which is actually really cool and really um, 
hard to watch, but really cool at the same time, where he's digging out a bullet out of himself, basically, and he's pushing it out because it's literally going through his side or of his stomach or whatever. And um, he uh, cuts the front of the bullet out, and then he pours the gunpowder right on uh, the the back of the wound, the the exit wound or the entry wound, I'm not sure. But he's heating up his knife or uh, something flammable on a, on a fire. And then he takes the flame and he puts it where the gunpowder is. And you can see the flame shoot right out of the front. And it's coming out both sides. And I can only imagine the pain being extraordinary if somebody was doing that in real life. Probably pass out from it. But uh, Rambo being a machine, <laughs> basically, um, it's, uh, you know... He, uh, he troops it. Um, there's a really good grenade kill that I li really like, where this huge, huge Russian guy is basically bear-hugging him and bear-hugging Rambo and uh, just squeezing the fuck out of him. And um, he has a, the guy has a grenade strapped to him, so Rambo gets a chance to pull the pin. And uh, he, Buddy backs away, and then he does this wicked-ass roundhouse kick on his face and uh, he stumbles back and he falls into a hole and he's, uh, he's got like rope tied to his neck. So he falls through the hole with the grenade on him and then he snaps his neck and then blows to pieces. It's pretty sick. Um, and then the final, uh, the final scene of the film is this huge battle in the desert with um, tanks and helicopters and um, you know, Rambo and, uh, Sam Trotman versus an army, basically. Well, guess who wins? Two men, of course. <laughs> it's great. Uh, so unrealistic and so action-packed at the same time that you just forgive everything. It's that kind of movie. It's, it's that kind of action-packed 80s film that you really don't give a shit how unrealistic it is. There's horses everywhere. There's, there's friggin', you know, gun gunplay, gun battles, especially at the end like I'm talking about, trenches, fantastic stuff. Um, there's, a, there's a scene where Rambo's in a tank and he plays chicken with one of the Apache helicopters and he's going, going, going and he crashes right into it and the whole thing blows up. Good stuff, good stuff. It's a man's film. It's a man cave kind of movie. Um, I, like I said, I really liked it better. Uh, well, I really liked it the best in this viewing. And uh, I can say I definitely recommend Rambo 3. It's almost better than Rambo 2, which is funny because I have I would always swear that Rambo 2 is better. These are kind of hair on hair. Um, you know, if I watch them back to back, I definitely could say which one I like better. But the concept of this one is very, um, how could, you know, um, earned. It's very, it, it's very just, like it's very, it earned its place, it earned itself in the franchise very easily because of the characters that were built with Rambo himself, obviously, but with Sam Trotman, uh, who is one hell of a side character and one hell of a character to root for. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's actually uh, dedicated to the Afghan people. Afghan people, not African people. <laughs> Afghan people. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's, uh, released in 1988. Um, one thing that I've noticed, I've been watching the Blu-rays. These are, these are released in 4K, but they come with Blu-rays, and I've been watching all these on Blu-ray, because I don't have a 4K player or a 4K TV. The subtitles are weird. Um, Rambo Part 2 had no subtitles, and a lot of Vietnamese speaking. Um, this one has a lot of... Afghan speaking and Russian speaking, uh, especially Russian speaking because the all of the enemies are Russian and The first two Acts of the film so the first two the the, the first two-thirds There are no subtitles at all again, but then the whole third act has them So I don't know if it's a blu-ray thing or I don't know if it's the movie itself because I know you know subtitle tracks are different than the actual picture um, but I wonder if the 4k discs are different I'll have to check those out whenever I get a chance to hit up a 4k player um, but yeah with, when it comes to these releases I must say that the the subtitles are strange and I don't know if that's just the way it is or if 
maybe just the Blu-rays they didn't bother with the subtitles or, or making them um, con consistent kind of thing. But uh, it doesn't take away from it. I mean, you still know what's going on regardless, but when a good 20 minutes of the entire movie is in another language, you know, you uh, you like to know what's going on anyway. But uh, like I said, it's still, uh, it's not it's not the biggest deal in the world, and it's not, you know, uh, it's not a, I don't know, I'm blanking on the word. It's not a, it's not a, end all be all kind of thing um but yeah that's Rambo 3 and uh I am glad I gave it another watch I'm very excited to watch the next ones they uh they're definitely more modern and uh yeah um the fifth one is going to be very exciting because it'll be my second time watching it so I cannot wait to revisit that one especially and that will conclude the Rambo franchise and I recommend the third one. Well, watch the first one, first two first, if you haven't watched the series at all. And if you haven't watched the first movie, get on it and watch the freaking first movie. Come on. But we are on the third. So next is the fourth, simply titled Rambo. And until then, cheers.